When the Republic of Texas becomes its own country, they are going to hold elections first. So the election of 1836 will accomplish a few things. Sam Houston will be elected as president. Mirabeau B. Lamar will be elected as the vice president. The Constitution of 1836 will be approved and adopted. And then also they'll be throwing around that idea of annexation. And that is, should we join the United States? Now there's going to be some clear problems that this republic is going to have to face and problems drive policy. That means the issues are going to drive the solution. So the things that the government puts in place, the rules, the regulations, and the general idea of what we do, how we do things. So problem number one is our relationship with Mexico. There's still some unresolved issues there. So what do we do with an angry Mexico? The next issue is our money problems. We have spent way too much money, so we have to figure out, well, what do we do now that we've spent all this money? We have a debt. We owe people money. The third problem is going to be how do we relate now to the Native Americans? Because now we're going to have conflict. People will be moving into Texas and moving into territories that really don't belong to them. So now that the war is kind of over. What do we do about that relationship? The fourth issue is how do we define Texas politically on the map? Where are our borders and how do we get other people to officially recognize those borders? And then the last issue is that question of should we join the United States or should we stay independent in an independent nation as in like the Republic of Texas? As we said, Sam Houston became the first president of the Republic of Texas. And this is how he is going to answer some of those questions with those problems that we have. So his policies are, when we deal with Mexico, we need to stay on guard. We don't need to provoke them, but we need to keep to ourselves and make sure that other countries in the world recognize our borders so we can have backup if Mexico does try to invade us. How do we get out of debt? He says keep a balanced budget, which means you don't spend more than what you have. To help define Texas as a nation, we had to decide where to put our capital. And Sam Houston is going to say, well, let's put it at the small town of Houston for now. It was close to the coast and had access to pretty much everywhere in Texas. But it is going to serve as an issue whenever the government is going to try to meet because it rains there, it floods there, and the mud is just terrible. His Native American policy is going to be a policy for peace and to formally recognize human rights of these Native Americans, give them rights as Texas citizens. Sam Houston also believed that if we would join the United States, become a state of the U.S., a lot of our problems would not just disappear, but the U.S. would be able to alleviate a lot of our problems that we had. Just because they were a more established nation, and joining them would give us a definite advantage. So looking at how does all of this play out, his policies become causes, and cause and effect is a big deal anytime that we study what a, one person does to try to help their country, how, how to help their nation. So Houston is going to send the regular army home. This is going to try to help bring order because, honestly, the regular army, the paid army, was causing so much trouble. They were unruly. They were ready to pick fights. He is going to rely on the militias and the Texas Rangers. Now this is going to help keep order and it's also going to minimize military spending. By the way, he also gets rid of the Texas Navy. The next thing that Houston will do is going to be his policy about the land. He's going to encourage immigration to Texas and he's even going to start working on the Homestead Law or the Homestead Act that will try to encourage people who are down on their luck whenever it comes to finances to come to Texas. This will help to bring in revenue, which is taxes money, through property taxes. Houston worked with the Native American leaders 
and the Texas Rangers to create trading outposts to try to implement his policy of peace and recognition of human rights. This was meant to build positive relationships between the Texans and the Native American population. After Houston serves his first term, which is a three-year term, Mirabeau B. Lamar is going to be elected as president. He was vice president before, so now he's going to have a turn to be president. If he had a motto for his presidency, it would probably say, same issues, different policy, because he is going to be almost the opposite of Sam Houston on a lot of the policies that he makes. He wants to build Texas to be a strong nation and almost like this plan for an empire. So Lamar is going to say, well, what do we do about Mexico? We need to display our might by building the military up to be more than what we have now and bring back the Navy. How do we get out of debt? He says, well, we need to spend some more money to make ourselves stronger, and then that will boost the economy. Where do we put the capital? He's going to choose a town called Waterloo that is almost exactly smack dab in the middle of Texas. So Waterloo will be turned into the city of Austin and be a great centralized place to have the capital of Texas. That is where it will stay. It will be our new permanent capital. That's where it is today. His Native American policy was to remove the Native Americans from their land that they were in in Texas. And he was against annexation. He didn't want to become a state of another nation. He wanted to keep Texas strong and independent not join another nation, even the U.S. So what that looks like is Lamar is going to spend money on land for public schools and pass the Homestead Law. This helped to start a public education system and Texans would not lose their homes in foreclosures if they were not able to pay off their loans for their lands. Lamar also spent money rebuilding a stronger military. So instead of calling everybody back home, he's going to hire those people that were sent home to be part of the military again. And by rebuilding the Navy, he is going to spend a lot of money on building ships. He is going to put Edwin Moore in charge of being the Commodore of the Texas Navy. Lamar moved the capital of Texas to Waterloo in Austin, our permanent capital, and a judge is going to be the person who lays out the streets of the city. It will be a planned city. That judge's name was Edwin Waller. Some major events that will happen while Lamar is in office will include the Santa Fe Expedition and the Council House fight. The Santa Fe Expedition is going to be whenever Lamar is trying to show that strength and he sends troops to invade Mexico with the order to secure the border and also to take Santa Fe. The expedition was a failure. In 1840, representatives from Texas and also a group of Comanche chiefs, uh, chiefs, they met to negotiate a truce and to stop fighting over land. By that time, the Comanche had taken some Texans captive and the Texans had taken some Comanches captive. So they met at the council house in order to negotiate an exchange of those prisoners. And whenever that took place, they swapped, but there was a prisoner that was a Texan that she ended up saying that this is not all of the Texans that the Comanche have captured. Whenever she starts talking about there are more Texans, that are still captured in Comanche camps, well then the Texans are going to ask, well where are these other people? So the Comanche chief is going to say, well that's not under our control. We don't have control of uh, all of the other Comanche encampments. That's somebody else's territory. I can't handle those prisoners. So a fight is going to take place and whenever the fighting started happening, it happened very quickly at the courthouse. The Texans fired on the Comanche, and it's going to kill almost all of the Comanche that were there. 
another event that I don't have listed here is going to be an issue with a chief that is over the Cherokee in East Texas. His name is Chief Bowles, and he is going to try to work with the Texas government, but have a pushback from Mirabeau B. Lamar. A battle is going to take place called the Battle of Natchez, and Chief Bowles will be killed. Not very good for the relationship between Texans and the Native Americans. After Lamar's turn or term in office as president for three years, Sam Houston will be re-elected as president of the Republic of Texas. So he will serve a second three-year term. In his administration, he's going to continue to have the same ideas about what to do with Mexico, except he's going to have to relate a little bit differently as an effect of the decisions made by President Lamar. And that is going to be, he's going to change from stay on guard to handle Mexico's response to the Santa Fe expedition, which is going to be to invade Texas over and over, sack San Antonio twice. Not a very good deal here. How do we get out of debt? He's going to return to a balanced budget, which is going to be difficult because Lamar had made paper money. This is going to cost more than it's going to actually help. Land issues, there's a regulator-moderator war, not a good deal. Native American policy, peace and protection of rights, stick into that, and then he is still pro-annexation. The events that take place during Houston's second administration are going to be reactions to the different events that took place during President Lamar's presidency. So we'll talk about the archives war first. So Mexico responds to the Santa Fe expedition by ordering the invasion of Austin and San Antonio. Sam Houston is going to order the Texas Rangers under John Jack Coffey Hayes to move the archives, that's the records that were in Austin, to Houston. Because he's assuming that Santa Ana is going to order for any kind of government documents to be destroyed because that's how you build your government. So in order to protect these records that are called archives, Houston is going to try to move them to Houston, Texas, the city. The people of Austin thought that Houston was moving the whole capital again though. He didn't want they didn't want him to move the capital back to Houston. So they're going to take a cannon, turn it on the Texas Rangers, and attack their own Texas Rangers. This is also where we meet one of our characters in Texas history named Mary Maverick. She was a pioneer, but she's going to write about her life during this time, and her diary is going to give us an inside look of the Archives War. In the 1840s, Mexico and Texas were at their highest tensions against one another than what we've seen. So Texas wanted to retaliate against Mexico for invading and sacking San Antonio like twice. So the dispute will come to an appeasement sort of tactic from Sam Houston. So that means he's going to send out an expedition called the Somerville Expedition just so his people will feel like they're able to get their revenge. They're sent to the Nueces and, uh, and the Rio Grande, that area between the two, kind of a neutral ground, and they raided Laredo and Guerrero. Whenever the raiding was over, though, their commanding officer asked the 700 men that were in this expedition to return home. 300 of them are going to say, no, we don't want to go home. We want to keep raiding these different Mexican border towns. Eventually, they're going to run out of food. So they will raid a town called Mir. This is where we get the name, the Mir Expedition. So on Christmas in 1842, December 20 the, the 25th, um, there will be a bloody battle that takes place between these 300 men that are on the Texas side and the Mexican soldiers that show up to shut them down. 200 are going to surrender to the Mexican government. The rest of them will either have died or they will run back to Texas. And this will lead us to something called the Black Bean Incident. That's why I've got beans in the background there. So the Black Bean Incident is whenever there are 176 captured Texan soldiers 
are going to be marched back to command and they were going to be imprisoned. Whenever they're imprisoned, not just the Texan government, but the U.S. government are going to plead, along with even the British government, for these captives to be released and sent back to Texas. They will beg for mercy. So Santa Ana promises mercy. His version of mercy, though, is going to be a lottery, where the 176 soldiers will draw a bean from a hat. So kind of like drawing a ticket from a hat. 159 beans were white beans and 17 were black beans. If you drew a black bean, then that means that you would be executed immediately. If you drew a white bean, then that meant that you were to go to a prison camp and that's what happened to them. Most of the ones that drew a white bean that were not executed on the spot had to work in a road gang. That means they had to build a road as part of their prison sentence or sent to a prison in Veracruz. The U.S., Great Britain, and Texas will still try to get these prisoners released. And eventually, in September 1844, the prisoners will be released. There's no big ceremony for this to happen. They kind of release them just whenever they feel like it. I'm sure you noticed that our relationship with Mexico was not really all that great, but there is some good that happens during Houston's last term in office. One of those things is going to be the Treaty of Tecahana Creek. March 1843, there's going to be nine different Native American groups that met with Texas officials at a place called Tecahana Creek. They agreed to stop fighting in October 1844, Houston and Chief Buffalo Hump signed the Treaty of Tehokana Creek to establish peaceful relations. So see, there was some good. Now backing up a little bit before that, in the 1840s, the same time as we're having trouble with Mexico, we have bandits and outlaws that moved into East Texas, into what is called the Old Neutral Ground. And a feud began in 1840 between Alfred George and Joseph G. Goodbread over fake land titles. I don't know what it is about East Texas and fake land titles, but that's the problem again. The community chose sides, and Houston had to send the army in to shut them down because the local officials couldn't control all these people shooting at each other. So the army shut them down in 1844. It was called the Regulator Moderator War. Houston's final term was from 1841 to 1844, and then a new leader will be elected, a new president, and his name was Anson Jones. He was the president from 1844 to 1845. Really, you can count 1846 a little bit of it, but we'll talk about why here in a second. So, what did he do in the year that he was elected president of the republic? Jones worked towards these things. What do we do about Mexico? We stop these raiding parties. We don't be reactive. We stop messing with them and try to get other countries to recognize us as a sovereign nation, or there could possibly be a different solution. We'll talk about it in a little bit. How do we get out of debt? We keep that balanced budget. The Native American policy for Jones was peace and protection of human rights for them. And then he was pro-annexation. This was his solution to all of these problems, is join the United States and these problems won't disappear, but we'll be able to handle them easier with a country that is established at our lead. So Jones negotiated annexation with President John Tyler. And the main thing that will happen during his office is that he is going to get Texas annexed into the United States. That means Texas will formally join the U.S. and become a state in the United States at Anson Jones' lead. And that's why we have that quote by him that says, The Republic of Texas is no more.